donk, donk, donk. Straight wheel. Bang, 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 donk, 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 bang, bang, bang. Sorry about that. It looks like I lost a. Looks like I lost a fair amount of footage because I ran out of memory. But uh, yeah, we'll go back over a lot of this stuff when we rebuild the bike. Truth be told, it's more important how you put a bike back together than it is than you take it apart. But as much as I run my mouth, I like to use the opportunity to bring up good points whenever they hit my mind. So if they strike my mind while I'm tearing something apart, well, then that's when you'll hear about it. Bolt's coming out real hard, which means there's corrosion and and uh, mess up in that bolt. So now that I got it loose, go back the other way about a quarter turn and then come back this way. See if we can coax it out without too much damage. There we go. A little shaving or something was burred up in there. If I'd have just forced it and not let it go and backed up a quarter turn, it would have just gouged its way out and ruined the threads. But by turning back a little bit, it lets whatever whatever that little piece of metal is in there find a home. It lets it find a nook or cranny to get up into and and not gouge up as it comes out. Oh, this one. Yeah, same thing. Hey, Shane. Shane. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking part of my dirt bike right now. Let me call you back tonight, is that right? Okay, is that cool? You alright? You need me right now? Alright, cool. Yeah, I'm ripping my RM250 apart and uh, going through and looking all see what all parts I need for it, you know? Yeah. Alright, I'll ring you after I get shower or eat a little bit. I'll call you at 9 o'clock or something. Alright, All right, buddy. Okay. Alright, last step on a teardown. I got the whole rear suspension completely disassembled, except for the shock. This head bearing actually don't feel bad. But I'm going to take it apart anyway because I'm going to paint the frame. But it's actually working pretty good, so I probably won't need to buy parts for it. Just clean it up, grease it up, throw it on back together. One of the challenges of uh, working outside without a garage, you know, you do what you got to do when you got to do it. I had put acetone in this bowl and soaked all these parts to try to get the paint to come off, and it, you know, did a good job. But then it rained in the middle of the night, and uh, when it rained, it diluted the acetone. So that was the end of that. I plugged up the uh, master cylinder hole with uh, brake pedal bolt just to get to where I could soak it and keep you know extra grunge from getting down in the bore of the master cylinder. This bowl was full of water, rainwater I dumped out. So yeah, that's part of the challenge of uh, that's part of the challenge of working outside. You know, sometimes you're going to get rained on. I left these parts out to soak, went to bed, went to work the next morning, and uh, you know it's just part of the deal. Here's a few of the main parts that's going to go to the bead blaster, uh, sand blaster guy to get all cleaned up. Um, these parts are obviously way too big for me to go to my local hardware store and buy a blast cabinet. Um, a cabinet big enough to fit that frame in would cost more than I want to invest in a project like this. So I'm going to let him blast right on top of these bearings on purpose because I'm throwing them away anyhow and I want to protect the aluminum surfaces that those parts rest on. You know I want to protect the bore or the size of that metal so uh, you know I'll tape that up right there and leave that sitting where it's at and he can blast all around it and that way when I get it back you know I can put the new bearings on fresh clean surfaces that, that were not blasted um, same thing with a swing arm I'm gonna uh, I'm just gonna let him blast right there on the bearings and then I'll press them out and replace them 
and it'll get new bearings because when he blasts it'll ruin those but that's okay because then I'll have nice good clean bores inside that casting to work with so it's just a matter of you know a little bit of forethought and prep work if, if you know you're going to destroy a bearing blasting it then you know you got to replace it if you have a bearing that you don't want to replace you know then maybe you press it out and you know thinking you vintage guys guys where you can't replace a bearing maybe you can't get another part to and you, you know it's an eternal back order on something built in the 40s or 50s if that's the kind of work you're doing and you got to save those bearings then do what you got to do and mask off your work area but you know for production Japanese bikes built in the 1990s I can get every bearing on this thing for you know nothing in there is going to cost me more than 15 bucks a piece you know there's, there's nothing in there that's going to really cost any money or time so with a project like this one you just blast all around the old bearings get all the paint off make the parts look nice and good go ahead powder coat them if that's what you're going to do paint them if that's what you're going to do clear them if that's what you're going to do brush them if that's what you're going to do you know whatever matte finish brush finish powder coat finish Cerakote finish whatever you're doing do it and then when you're all done chip it away clean it up knock the bearings out and put new ones in grease everything up and you're done that's the way to handle that guys now as far as doing the finish work on the engine see where it's all rough looking beat up looking I'm inside of a shaded interior of a van while the sun's shining I don't have no idea what kind of lighting you're getting there but but you can see all that rust and all that muck you know I want all that bead blasted and cleaned up but you can't spray bead blast right down your crank bearings you know and all over your transmission parts and it'll stick to all that oil and it'll ruin your engine in no time so you got a couple of choices you can do the painstaking work of by hand masking every part you know like this cylinder head wouldn't be bad right with this you could mask off the bottom and just mask that whole surface off blast the top and then when you're done put it on a flat plate give it a little flat plate sandy sandy you know and make it ready to go again well that's fine for that part but I don't want <laughs> I don't want to do that for each and every single part inside the engine um, this is not a true restoration job if it was and I'm capable of that kind of work I've done it before if this was that way then every steel part would come out um, get blasted independently and nickel plated um, you know every single internal engine bearing even the little ones for the water pump impellers and all the you know little shift guide bearings and all those they'd all be replaced the case halves would independently be bead blasted and then um, uh, you know rebuilt with all new bearings but this isn't that level of rebuild this is a functional rebuild I need a good running engine that I can go you know ride on a motocross track with or ride in the dirt trails with so to do this engine what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gut it I'm gonna take the crank out um, pop everything out of it and leave it a hollow shell pull the clutch basket and all that stuff off you know leave all the clutch internals out the clutch push parts springs kickstarter shaft gears you know I'm just gonna make it a hollow shell and then loosely bolt everything together I'll just throw the jug on the cases throw the cases together put the head on top and uh, you know plug up the holes I'll put the kickstart shaft in the hole I'll put the shift shaft in the hole I'll put the uh, spark plug in the spark plug hole um, I'll make a flat aluminum plate to just pull up tight on the reed cage area and uh, and uh, put a rubber plug in the exhaust and basically just have a hollow engine where all the exterior parts are going to be visible um, and then bead blast that whole thing as a hollow assembly um, and then do whatever I'm going to do with the finish and the engine and or maybe I'll do the frame true blue of course the triple and the swing arm will be silver or aluminum and then maybe I'll do the engine uh, 
silver. I don't know if I can though because this magnesium. What do you think guys? Comment below. These are Suzuki magnesium parts that have been painted. I mean this thing is super light. I don't know why they did that on a production bike. I guess just to be cool or whatever but I don't know what the natural color of this magnesium is going to be after it's blasted all the way down. Just honestly don't know. But that's magnesium, this is magnesium, and so is this. So, maybe maybe it'll look cool if, yeah, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll bead blast the whole engine into its natural aluminum color, or natural magnesium bead blasted color, and then just clear it and see what happens. Um, the magnesium covers might look a little different shade than the, than the cases and the jug. Okay, that could look cool. We'll see how that flies. So, uh, and then we'll do the true blue on the shock spring and the frame, you know, and the foot pegs and that kind of stuff. So, uh, all right, guys. Everybody be safe. I love you. Ride safe. Uh, God bless you.